Hello, and welcome back to Icky Chic Designs. This is Linda, and I'm happy to have you with me today. Believe it or not, uh, it's minus four degrees outside, and while that may not be strange for some of you, it's very strange for me because I live in Northeast Texas, and it doesn't get this cold very often. So it was a wonderful day to stay in and finish uh, this piece that I've been working on for several days. And uh, I just love the way it looks. I love uh, the, what I call TM or textile menagerie type uh, fiber art and putting it all together, slow stitching it is just, it's just a wonderful experience altogether. And I wanted to uh, show you this one that I finished. Now this one is, uh, I'm going to be putting it, the kit in my Etsy shop sometime in the next week where I will be supplying the background fabric and the different uh, fibers, fabrics, and threads that you see uh, that I've used here. Plus a few extra things that give you just a little bit more uh, styling options there. <clears throat> now what I started with was some fabric that I had cut up into this size and it's floral fabric and I used the elements in the fabric built on those elements and created a couple of my own that weren't there and so that's really a wonderful way to get started if sometimes I hear people say well I, I don't know what to get started on I don't know where to start and uh, if you're just working on a blank piece of fabric well that can be intimidating. But in this case, you've got some inspiration and that can trigger uh, the artist in you to start building some different layers here to make something that you like. Now, of course, this is floral, so we're, we're gonna be with uh, flowers and uh, someone may get creative with a butterfly or bird or whatever, but um, they will, have something here to begin with and that's what I had was a piece of this fabric with uh, the print of the back that I began with now this is a good horizontal format and that's what I worked in my piece but I also will have some floral uh, vertical formats I thought this would be excellent I, I can just see beautiful things done here with the leaves and perhaps some flowers put within the leaves some blossoms here and then using some of this red outline here to create some background texture for for that uh, just just a wonderful uh, beginning place so each of my kits um, uh, you'll be able to choose the background fabric that you want to start with and then uh, build from there <clears throat> Like I said, I, I had that same thing. I had leaves, 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 leaves. And so I created um, a floral here, a floral there. And this was already a little flower of some kind, so I just embellished it a little. And I worked some of the leaves. Uh, I love the uh, eyelash uh, fringe because it just gave me that grassy textured look. Uh, that I could imagine growing in this <clears throat> imaginary garden. And so I created it that way. Now, people say, well, I can't do that. Well, of course you can do this. Uh, look at it carefully. It's just bits and pieces cut and layered up on each other. That's all it is. It's there's no uh, big design factor here. It's, it's start creating something you like. Let's start with something simple here. There was leaves in the background here. So all I did was I took a little green uh, lace and then a little yellow and green fabric that I cut like that sh uh, little bitty leaf shape and I just stitched it on. That's all there is to that. And uh, then some little texture yarn in here to go with that. Uh, on this flower here, I had some of this cotton uh, ribbon a trim and I cut it up in little pieces. Uh, it looks, let's see, 
this is what it looks like. Uh, but I cut a section, little section off and then cut that up, created me little pieces. I have it in the, this color and this color. And I thought, well, that created a really pretty textured flower. Then I just added bits and pieces of other things that I had and stitched those. Straight stitching, uh, stem stitching, uh, French knots, just, just simple stitches, nothing, stem stitching, nothing, nothing uh, hard at all to do there. <clears throat> now the bigger flower uh, is also, I just started layering in different little cuts of fabric. I have fabric, I have uh, bits of uh, lace, I have some little uh, silver lame uh, fabric in there. Um, just layered it on there, stitched it on there, and till I got it to where I like it. And that's the key to making something like this is, I like to encourage people, while, while I will make a kit and put it in my Etsy shop, I don't mean that you have to make exactly what I make, or you have to do it exactly like I do it. That's not what I want to encourage at all. I want to encourage you to take the elements you might not have uh, access to um, several kinds of uh, threads and, and fancy fabrics. Well, that, that will be in the kit, but maybe you have some of your own and you want to replace those. That's wonderful. You be creative, you be the designer, you put it together the way you want to. And if you were working the same identical background piece, you might switch these flowers. You might make the bigger flower down here and the smaller flower up there. There's just no telling what you would do. You, instead of this yarn coming out through here, you might have create large leaves of some kind, you know, making it your design. The thing is that these kits that I'm putting together are for inspiration. They're not really designed. My intent is not really that you copy exactly what I've done because that, let me tell you, that is not fun, trying to do exactly what somebody else did. But if you have the supplies they had and you can start creating your own, then the designer comes out in you. Now, in the beginning, if you've never done it before, uh, you may not be all that pleased with your end result. But the point is, if you continue to do that, if you continue to uh, create things, on your own, design your own elements, you'll get better and better and better at until you're creating things you really love. And really, you're the only person who has to love it, right? Now, if I frame this and hang it in my home, I'm proud of it. I love it. I have a niche for it. It just, it's just wonderful to do it that way. So I encourage you, while you may want to try to copy and form in some way some of the elements, Try to strike out on your own. Try to design it differently and make it your own. Now, one thing about uh, the kit is that each of these uh, backgrounds are different. So you are going to be able to choose the one you want to deal with, the one you think inspires you, and you have an idea of that. Oh, yes, I know exactly what I want to do with this. And that's the way it goes. Now, this could be for a beginner all the way up to <clears throat> a very talented fiber artist because the stitching that you put into it is up to you. If you can just straight stitch, then just straight stitch. If you know some decorative stitches and want to use them, use them. If you want to use uh, plain thread and, and not embroidery floss, go for it. If you want to use ribbon, do it. Whatever it is that you want to use uh, to create this piece. Now, I didn't add any beads of any kind, but I do like a little glitter in in uh, whatever I do. Uh, it just helps, uh, I think, in dimension and interest. So, of course, I have some yarn that's got some glittery uh, aspects to it. And, uh, I had, like I said, some silver lame fabric here. Uh, I used 
Um, let me show you if I can find it really quick. I have a little yarn here that is that has uh, glittery through it. I hope you can see that. It's sparkles. Oh, sorry. And uh, so a lot of times that will work for me. Whatever you have, uh, the outside uh, border of this is this yarn here, this eyelash yarn. Let me get a bigger wad here so you can see it. It's, it looks like a mess, but you can see it. And it bordered this beautifully with just the look exactly that I wanted. And so if you have some of those things around, uh, play with those too. Now, as I said in my kits, when I get them created and in the shop, they will have these elements in it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that's all you can use by any means. And it doesn't mean you have to use it where I used it. You can do something different with it. Uh, I thought that this eyelash yarn would look very good coming out from here. It would be like a really bushy, leafy thing in the back. And I thought, well, that'd be a whole different look too. And uh, so anyway, lots of ideas pop into my head while I'm playing with these. And it will do the same uh, for you if you allow yourself to be inspired and not just copy, okay? So layering is, uh, it's not, on something like this, it's not real critical to know what goes down first, second and third and so forth. Uh, you just might want to think, okay, well, for instance, I did some stitching on the leaf here. And I thought, well, I'll do that before I start building this flower. That way the flower will lay comfortably over it and I won't have to come back later and try to get my stitches under the flower. Something like that. Uh, a lot of times when you're layering, it just doesn't really matter, especially in a, a collage like this where it's just busy and you have things going on and it's not real precise. And if you know anything about my art, you know I don't like traditional squares, triangles, and straight lines. I'm just not a precise artist. And uh, <clears throat> so, do, you know, do something like that. Now, if I were to frame this, you know, I would definitely uh, come back here and do an outline stitch of uh, this uh, linen here and onto some kind of fabric. It might be something like this calico or something different. And uh, then I would uh, frame it behind glass, uh, probably with a white mat and a black frame because that is uh, usually gallery colors. Uh, when you go into galleries, a lot of times your fine art is um, framed that way. Uh, uh, white mats, black frames. That's so that the art itself stands out and not the frames. And uh, so I, I do like to frame my stuff that way. And uh, I take it to Hobby Lobby and uh, their frames are on sale quite often. Uh, usually there's always something on sale there. And you can get different grades of glass and uh, different uh, mounts. And you can either get those and put it together yourself or you can have them do it however you, however you prefer to do it. But if you have a piece of art that you want to keep and display in your home, definitely put the uh, effort into framing it well and hang it like it's art. Uh, so <clears throat> I hope that uh, you enjoyed this and that you'll be adventurous and try a little bit of yourself. If you have some fabrics at home that lend themselves to this type of uh, craft, well, grab them. Uh, decide what size you want to work on. And I believe this is a six by eight. Uh, I believe this piece is a, is a six by eight. And that's, that's hand size, lap size for me for slow stitching. I, I like that size. It's also a size that the project doesn't take me three months to finish. And uh, if I'm working on something very detailed and lots of work in it, uh, I like to I like to know that basically in three to five days I'm going to have that that piece finished, and uh, 
So that's kind of what I shoot for, and so that size works well for me. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, do that. And if you like what you see on the channel, please uh, tell your friends. I'd like to grow the channel. And <clears throat> if there's something that you would like to see uh, me do, we'll drop that in the comments too. Uh, I like to try to do things that you're interested in. Uh, slow stitching and fiber art are, are pretty popular right now. Uh, in the past few years, I've been doing mostly junk journaling and uh, embellishments for that, and I still do a little of that, but I'm transiting over to the uh, hand sewing, basically, the, the fiber arts, the textile menageries, as I call them. And uh, so you'll, you'll see the word uh, TM kit on a lot of my stuff and in my Etsy shop, and the TM stands for textile menagerie. And that just tells you that you can, anything textile, fabric, yarns, threads, whatever, you can put it together. And then of course, there's no art police around, so you can throw beads, buttons, and whatever else you want there with it too. So until next time, thank you for watching and go and be creative.